All right, guys, if y'all are, are ready back there, then we'll uh, go ahead and uh, yeah, go play this. pray, pray in and let, let everybody get separated in our classes. Yeah, so. yeah go play this. I've what? been ready to miss. <laughs> All right, so if you will, uh, please join with me. Let's uh, go, Lord, in prayer and just uh, thank you for this day and this opportunity we have to, to get gather together and just uh, learn of him and just uh, grow in, in our love and understanding of, of, of who he is. Just uh, Let's go, Lord, in prayer. <clears throat> Great Heavenly Father, Lord, we are thankful for being able to gather together once again today, Father. Lord, we thank you for uh, this blessed day that you've given us, Lord, and the, the breath and the strength we've had to... to and the, the guidance and protection that you've uh, provided to allow us to make it through it to this point, Father. Lord, I just pray as we separate into our classes, Father, I just ask that your anointing and your Holy Spirit, Father, be at work in us, Father. We thank you for the word that we have tonight, Lord, and just ask that you would um, touch our hearts today, Father. Help us to examine ourselves. Lord, grow us in wisdom and understanding of the greatness and the goodness of our glorious God. And, uh, Lord, and just... Uh, I just pray that as we leave uh, our groups tonight, Father, Lord, that we leave this place uh, encouraged and excited and just increase in our faith uh, in love in you. We just thank you in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, if you got your Bibles with you tonight, uh, I'd like for you to turn with me to Matthew chapter 7. And uh, we're going to talk about prayer tonight. And we're going to talk about um, prayer is more than just words. Uh, it's when you talk about prayer, or when you become involved in prayer, it is a multi-level process to it. And that's what I want to talk about tonight. Is that process of those steps in prayer for us to have powerful and effective prayers. Do you know what the greatest prayer there is? For me, it's an answered prayer. Any other prayers, not really any good unless it's an answered one, right? So there's, a, there's some criteria that's there for us to have our prayers answered. And so uh, so the title of the, the, the study tonight is uh, about prayer, and it's, uh, uh, I'm just going to say it's ask, seek, and knock. The, the ask, seek, and knock process of prayer, I guess we could say. So in Matthew chapter 7, uh, starting in verse 8 there, let's, uh, let's read through uh, verses 8 and I guess maybe through 11 is where we'll stop. And then uh, let's, we'll talk about these tonight. So Matthew chapter 7, starting in verse 8. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Sounds great. Uh, if you ask, uh, you receive. If you seek, you will find. And him that knocketh, it shall be opened. People read these verses and think, hey, that's great. That's very encouraging. Well, let's not stop there. Let's continue on. Verse 9. For what man is there of you whom is his son asked bread, he will give him a stone. Or if he ask a fish, he will give him a serpent. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father in heaven give good things to them that ask him? So, when I read these verses, what comes to my mind is God loves us and he wants to give us what we're asking for. He, he wants to give us what we're asking for if what we're asking for is good for us to have. Let's go Lord in prayer. Father in heaven, Lord we know, Lord and we stand <clears throat> solid confirmation Father that you are indeed a good, good Father, Lord, who does give great gifts to your children. Father, we know that it's your heart's desire to, to grant blessings and answer prayers to those that ask of you, Father. But Lord, we understand, Father, Lord, that it's just not 
all uh, prayers, Father, Lord, that get answered. Lord, and we understand that there's good reason for some prayers not getting answered. So, Lord, I just pray that as we look into those uh, criteria and those circumstances and those conditions, Father, Lord, that, um, that we need to understand that we need to have, Father, for you to be able to, to answer our prayers. Lord, that it would help us in our prayer life with you. Lord, it would help us to come to you in the right spirit, in the right manner, with the right requests, Father. Lord, that you might be able to grant upon your children whom you love very much the blessings of answered prayers for what they might be seeking. I just thank you in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> so, uh, in starting out, I want to ask the question, is there something specific that you have ever needed or maybe now need God to do in your life? And it may not even be in your life. You may have a... Uh, a need for maybe someone else. Um, let's say maybe a, a family member that you know isn't saved, that your heart pours out for. It, maybe it's somebody in your family that you pray for in regardless to their salvation or something. So, uh, again, looking at this uh, verse, Matthew chapter 7, verse 8, for everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be open. Is it safe to say that all of us have been at some point where we went to God in prayer, in request uh, for something? Uh, something that specific that we needed God to do uh, for us or, or on our behalf? Um, and it, it may not be a specific thing you're needing. It may be just um, questions about your life or what's going on in your life or the direction of life or anything like that. <clears throat> and I had mentioned this to somebody, um, I believe it was at work, and we were talking about, um, you know, what's going on in the world right now and things. And he asked me, he said, uh, is it wrong to question God? And the first thing that came to my mind that I told him, it says, it's not wrong to ask God questions, but I don't think it's right to question God. There's a, big, there's a big difference there. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to say, God, you know, what, what's happening here? Or, you know, to have that wonder, you know, you don't understand what's going on or you don't understand what God's doing in a circumstance. And, and, you, and you simply ask him, God, what, what's going on here? Um, or, again, <laughs> here he comes. <laughs> That's right. Is there, uh, you know, as I mentioned, uh, and I noted here, is there someone uh, in your life that you know desperately needs God that, that you've gone to God for? Uh, have you tried to talk to God about something that seems that you just can't seem to get an answer from Him? You know, you may be praying and asking God about something, but it just seems like you're you're not getting a response from God about it. And that's why I wanted to take a look at these verses here, because uh, Matthew 7 here gives us a good outline for how our conversations with God uh, should go. And again, it says, uh, for every, everyone that asks receives, one who seeks finds, and one who knocks at the door will be opened. Uh, in uh, uh, 9 through 11, uh, what man is there of you whom is the son asks bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? This is out of the NIV here. <clears throat> if ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, <clears throat> which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? And so I gave another little translation there to kind of try to understand the reading there. I've got one more translation here. Of, uh, this is from the message. And the message isn't a translation that... I would use for studies, but I, a lot of times I like how the translation of the messages, when it's in the, the correct context, helps to kind of give us the um, uh, country boy translation of what the verses are saying, I guess I would say. So this is what it says in the message. It says, don't bargain with God, be direct, ask for what you need. This isn't a cat and mouse hide and seek game we're in. 
So in other words, it isn't like you got to try to figure out what you got to do with God in order to get your answered prayer. It, or you got to um, you got to figure out the puzzle in order to get the prize of an answered prayer. It's not that kind of cat and mouse uh, hide and seek game with God. If your child asks for bread, do you trick him with sawdust? If your kid, you know, do you play those kind of, we don't play those kind of jokes on our own children. Or he goes on to say, if he asks a fish, do you scare him with a live snake on his blade? As bad as you are, you wouldn't think of, a, of such a thing. You're at least decent to your own children, so don't you think the God who conceived you in love will be even better? So ultimately, you know, even if us, in our sinful nature and our tendency to do evil and wicked things, we generally are good to our children because we love our children. And if God, who is perfect, and perfect in love, uh, and we are his children uh, born out of his love, would he not be even more not only capable, but willing and wanting to give us uh, what we would ask. And so I say all that to say this, that God does and will answer our prayers. Mm -hmm. He does and he will answer our prayers. Uh, and most of the time, if not all of the time, he will answer our prayers better than the manner that we ask them. And the example that I'll use for that is I asked God for a brand new Corvette Stingray. I'd love to have a Corvette Stingray. Him too. Oh, yeah? Probably not going to get it. Yeah. You know, uh, what, a 77 or a 78 maybe? Oh, my. <laughs> so, you know. But, uh, so I go to God and I ask him, God, could I, you know, I would love to have a, a Corvette Stingray. And God may think, would really enjoy that Corvette Stingray. And he's been a good child and faithful in all of this. And I would love to bless him with that Corvette Stingray. So, in this time and now, God, on one hand, today may think, well, he would sure enjoy that Corvette Stingray for about three months <laughs> until he would get a little too careless with that and about three months go a little too fast around that corner at the wrong time and the wrong circumstances and end up running off the road and killing himself. Is that the best gift for me to have that Corvette Stingray? No, probably not. <laughs> so God says... Mm, no, I don't think so. <laughs> That's the reason I have. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I do have a list. So, <laughs> so, so instead, I get a uh, 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 Chevelle. <laughs> okay. Okay. But no, but, but in all seriousness, you know, so, I, you know, I may not get that, but maybe something happens and I get blessed with a, another little car that's not quite as sporty, but, you know, still an antique that's fun to drive or something like that. Like my grandpa's 54 Ford Falcon that he had. I'd, I'd love to have had that too. Not, not quite a Stingray, but maybe that. But, you know, in that kind of circumstance, you know, maybe I didn't get the Stingray, but I got the Ford Falcon that I enjoy just as much, and I get the family in, and we ride around and have a good time and enjoy it. Um, so God answered my prayer, but not necessarily in the manner that I wanted because he answered it in a manner that was ultimately best for me. Right. He answered my prayer in a manner that was better than what I asked for. Uh, so that's one of the things we have to, I just use that as an example, but in, in, in actuality for our lives, many different times we ask for things and because somebody doesn't get it the exact way they asked for it, they think that, you know, God shortchanged them on their prayers or something. And that's just not the God that we serve. Our God is a loving God, and uh, he answers our prayers. I'll go ahead and say this. According to his good and perfect will for our lives. Amen. And that's an important thing that a lot of people forget about there. Uh, it is very common for Christians to know about prayer, to study prayer, and to memorize prayer verses, 
and read books about it and still not believe that prayer makes any difference. And you would be really surprised. They won't tell you this outright, uh, but many people, they, they try to study up and understand what prayer is, but they miss the most important fact that, and what we say in this church a lot of times, prayer changes things. There is power in prayer. Amen. <clears throat> and the thing about it is, is we prove we, we don't really believe God says about it when we don't actually pray. God's told us in his word to ask, seek, and knock, and he will answer. And that was one of the things that uh, we had, uh, that was funny uh, about Hannah one day, because, you know, we're always in the habit, especially when I get home at supper time, and, um, you know, we... Um, pray over our food before we eat. And um, there was one day, it was all busy, and everything was uh, <clears throat> just, there was a lot of distractions that was going on. And we put the food down, and <clears throat> Jessica thought that I would prayed with her. I thought that Jessica had prayed with her because we were kind of back and forth trying to get everything set up. <clears throat> and so we sat down to eat, um, and uh, nobody had actually prayed over the food. And Hannah knew because she was sitting there at the table the whole time while we were going back and forth. And so we sat down, fixed our place and everything, and started to eat. And, um, you know, took two or three bites of food. And Hannah was like, wait, wait. You know, and I think it started to cry like something was wrong. And we asked her what was wrong. And she said we didn't pray over the food. And and we told her, you know, that's, that's okay. And what we're telling her is, it's okay, we can still pray, but she thought we were saying, it's okay, we don't have, to, you know, it's okay that we didn't, you know. Uh, she, so she thought we weren't going to pray at all. And she was like, we have to pray. <laughs> she was adamant about praying over the food before we ate another bite or do anything else. And we, we, had, to, we had to explain to her, honey, we're, we're going to pray. We're, we're not, not going to pray. I'm just telling you it's okay that it happened that we didn't pray before we actually bite or two. <laughs> but, but we'll get our prayer in right now. But she was adamant about it. And it, it's just um, because and it, it showed me in her that it's not just part of the routine of eating. That even at her, even as young as she is, is I think she's already picked up on the notion that prayer is very important. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I thought about that afterwards is, is uh, here it is, Hannah's, you know, three, four years old, and she already believes that prayer is as important as a lot of other grown Christian folks do. So prayer, it is important. Um, so, <clears throat> and moving on, so that's why I wanted to take a look at these action words, to ask, to seek, and to knock. Uh, and I noted here, seeking God's answer means that we're looking for possible ways through which God may answer our prayer. But for tonight, I just want to talk about this first step, and that is asking. That's where it starts. You ne <laughs> you're never, you're never going to get anything if you don't ask. Of course, God knows what you're going to ask before you ask it, but you still must ask it. Uh, so like I mentioned, uh, prayer changes things, uh, but it, and it changes things both in the physical and the spiritual realm when you ask according to God's guidelines. That's what I was talking about when I said criteria and things like that. There are particular guidelines that we must meet in order for God to answer our prayers. If we want God to answer our prayers like we want, then we have to ask our prayers in the right manner, in the right way. Uh, uh, and the other thing that I wanted to, to make mention of here is that it may take time before you notice those prayers getting answered. God's timing is perfect. Um, My, unlike my GPS, I will say, 
Uh, have you ever used a GPS before? You know, where it tells you where to go, when to turn, things like that. Well, my GPS once, um, wasn't too long ago, I, I was really trusting it because I had no idea where I was at. So I was driving down this road and it, you know, so it would say, you know, veer right, um, uh, veer right at the next Y or something like that. Or, you know, get in the right hand lane to take exit in two miles or something like that. I mean, it was really getting detailed on everything. So, I mean, I, as soon as I heard it, I was, I was taking action and doing exactly what it told me. Because I was in a lot of traffic, and if I didn't take the opportunity as soon as I had it, I was going to miss it. And how many of you know, going down the interstate stuff, if you, if you miss your turn off, you may be messed up for several miles. Several miles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, unless you wait till nobody's coming and you try to get that. No, I'm kidding. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that. But anyway, so I was taking every action that it said. And then all of a sudden, it told me to, um, to turn right. It told me so many feet coming up to turn, but then when you actually get there, it'll tell you again to actually do that sale. Well, I don't know what happened to it, but it told me to turn right, and there was no road there for me to turn. <laughs> and I was so used to doing what it said, as soon as I heard it, I almost you know, pulled the steering wheel before I thought, hey, you know, I'm going to end up in the cornfield here. <laughs> and so if I would have followed the timing of that GPS, I would have been in a lot of trouble. Um, and that's the thing about it, it is with God is God will, tell, will give us the answer when it's the right time for us to have that answer for it. Um, and so again, we, we know that God's timing is perfect. But... Again, the first step is to ask God, to bring before God what it is that we request of Him. And here's where we really need to evaluate what it is that we're asking. And I want to point you to James chapter 4, verses 2 and 3 to help get some better understanding of how it is that we must ask. James chapter 4, verses 2 and 3. I think it gives us a, a really good um, clarification on some important criteria for our prayers, uh, for whatever it is that we may be going to God and asking of God for them to be answered. So in James chapter 4, verses 2 and 3, it says this, Ye lust and have not, ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war yet ye have not, because ye ask not. And this is so true. I see people trampling over other people to get things that they want to get by their own means, and they still can't get what they're wanting um, because they don't simply go to God and ask for it. And sometimes one of the reasons why they don't go to God and ask for it is because they know that what they're asking for, they're never going to get from God. How is it that somebody would know that they're not going to get what they're asking God for? They don't even bother praying to God and asking Him for whatever it is that they are wanting because they know they're not going to get it from Him. Why do you think they would have that mentality? Because they know it's out of his will. Right. The next verse here, I think, gives us an answer to that. You ask and receive not, because you ask amiss, that you may consume it upon your lusts. That's why I don't bother asking God for that Corvette steam rain. Because I know it's not, it's, it's to fill my own personal desire. You know, it's for me. Uh, it, it's to fill my own fleshly desire. Um, and that's what he says here. You ask and receive not because you ask amiss. And that's why I had this little question and answer piece here. And ask this question. Are the things you're wanting within God's will for you? The other question is, are you actually taking the time to ask God for what you want? And... 
what is it? And then after answering those questions, I wanted to steer you to John chapter 4, verses 13 and 14 that says this. And whatever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye ask anything in my name, I will do it. And this is another important factor in there. Who is our mediator to the Heavenly Father? Jesus. So it is important that we go to God by the name of Jesus Christ when we go to ask Him. And I, I really appreciate uh, Pastor's willingness to correct me some years ago because I would oftentimes even stand up here before the church and say, um, you know, opening prayer, closing prayer, and, and prayer here and prayer there and prayer everywhere. And one of the things that I was always in the habit of doing that I never even realized I was doing, I, I must have heard it from somebody else and just kind of picked up on it and not realized what I was doing. But Pastor was um, um, uh, um, loving enough to come to me to, to correct me on, on what I was doing. And I would, I would say, let's go, Lord, in prayer. Dear God, we love you and we thank you for this day. In God's name we pray. Amen. And that's what I would say. In God's name we pray. And, and this is the very thing that the pastor was teaching me, is how it is important that we, that it is by the name of Jesus that we <clears throat> come before God. And that's what it's saying here in, the, in the verses 13 and 14. Whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. So when we ask in Jesus' name, Jesus is going to answer that prayer in a manner that would bring glory to the Heavenly Father. And I'm okay with that. I would much rather God answer my prayer in a manner that God would get the glory for it. And that's kind of the, the, the attitude that we need to have whenever we bring our prayers before God. And I know for me personally, that's one of the things that I try to do to examine myself whenever I have a prayer request to lay uh, before God is is this that I'm praying for uh, is there some way that I see that this is going to glorify the Father and one of the, what that does a lot of times is because I don't know in my feeble little mind you know I can try to reason how it may glorify God but I don't know for sure so that puts me in the mindset, I always end up playing, you know, nevertheless, God, you know, you know, thy will be done. You know, you know, God, if it's your will, you know, please let, you know, you know, for example, healing. You know, uh, that's one thing that uh, uh, I remember when Sam was sick in the hospital. Um, and I had prayed this, and I was afraid he was going to be upset at me for saying it. Uh, and I really didn't, because I was, I was so in tune on God getting glory out of whatever it was he was going to do in Sam's life when he was sick in the hospital. And I had said, you know, God, if it's your will to heal him, heal him. But God, if you have more glory in uh, not healing him, then... Let him be sick. And when I had said that, I felt really bad. I felt really bad. Um, but then Sam, after that, had said that, um, what was it that he had said? I'm trying to remember what he said. Um, but whatever it was he would say, he had, uh, uh, had told me that it, it's something about it's always better that, that God's will is always going to be for the best, no matter, you know, how it happens. And, and he was absolutely right. 
and that's true. Uh, and it takes a really faithful, loving man of God to be able to say that. And I think that's why I was able to say that because, you know, I believe that Sam really does love the Lord and he really has his complete faith and trust in him. Uh, and I've said that in other times, you know, God heal him, but, you know, but your if, if it's according to your will, that's what I say a lot of times, if it's according to your will, Father, heal them, save them, you know, do whatever else. Because my mindset is, is I want Jesus to operate in my prayer request in a manner that it will bring glory to God. Right. Because that's ultimately what it's all about. Mm -hmm. If you want your prayer answered, have that kind of mentality. Because that is one of the criteria that we see here. That God is going, that Jesus is going to, uh, of how Jesus is going to operate in your prayer request. He's going to operate in a manner that would bring glory to the Heavenly Father. So that leads me to this question. According to these verses in John, what is the prerequisites for your asking? One, when we ask, we should ask in Jesus' name. Right? <clears throat> and Jesus will operate in a manner that would bring glory to the Father. Another important verse when it comes to how this process of us asking is John chapter 16 and verse uh, 24. There too have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask and you shall re receive that your joy may be full. And this is the verse that Pastor actually showed me when he was teaching me about, you know, it's, it's in the name of Jesus that we pray, not uh, the name of God. And uh, another way I wanted to share with you in a different translation, again, looking at the message, says it this, uh, this way. This is what I want you to do. Ask the Father for whatever is in keeping with the things I've revealed to you. Ask in my name according to my will, and he'll most certainly give it to you. Your joy will be a river overflowing its banks. So again, then looking at these verses, according to, uh, to this verse, what would be the outcome of our asking if we ask in the right manner and in the right way? It'll be answered. It will be answered. And that's one of the things I think Jesus does that we get frustrated about not knowing that it's actually for our good is that it's almost impossible for me to ask in the right way um, sometimes. I may have good intentions and I may think through it and try to think of how to ask rightly whatever it is that I request of God. But I am, uh, I don't know the beginning from the end. But God does. But the Lord does. And I think that's where Jesus comes in as such, as a, such a wonderful mediator between us and the Father. That's why I'm happy to go to Jesus with my prayer request. But Jesus is a good tweaker. He'll take your requests and he'll tweak them and make them to where they line up with God's will. And they line up with um, how that prayer request will be answered and bring glory to the Heavenly Father. And whenever he does that, um, some people see their prayer get answered just a little bit differently sometimes. They're like, you know, I asked for this. I asked this. And I got that. Instead of saying, you know, God, you answered my prayer. It wasn't the way that I was expecting, but because you, I see that you did answer it, Obviously, you answered it in a better way than I asked. God's not going to give you worse than what you asked for. Going back to those first verses, you know, if your child asks for a fish, do you give them a snake on the plate? Do 
you may uh, you may not give them a, a carp. I don't know if many of you know a carp, but they're bony jokers. <laughs> you ever tried eating a carp? You're in for a challenge. Unless it's done right. I think I've had one one time before where you can peel it back and eat it right. But uh, if you've ever tried to eat a, a carp, all in bones and stuff, it's to me it tastes good. But man, it's a lot of work to try to get to it in between all the little fine bones and stuff. If Hannah asked for some fish for supper, I wouldn't give her a carp to try to eat. I'd give her, you know, some kind of fillet, you know, catfish fillet or something, something with no bone, something that you eat. She's going to fuss and get mad because I didn't give her a carp, you know. <laughs> because if she actually got a carp, she'd realize that, you know, she wished she wouldn't have asked for that. Because she didn't know. She wouldn't know. She's seen somebody else eating a carp and said, hey, I want a carp. But we do God that way sometimes. We ask for a carp, but he gives us something a little bit, uh, it's a little easier to eat and, and may even taste a little better. But because we didn't get exactly what we asked of him, we think that God shortchanged us. But again, like I said, God loves us more than we love our own children. That's what, that's what it says. Mm-hmm. And if we wouldn't, if our children ask us for something and we give them something different, I would bet majority of the time it's something because it's either better or better for them, whatever we give them. And that's what God does for us. Is he gives us something that's even better. He gives, how's the scripture? Exceedingly abundantly more than we could ever think or ask. So, again, looking at this, that's a, you know, when it comes to prayer, that's kind of our, our uh, first steps, is um, it, our very first step is asking God. Um, looking into that verse, uh, what does it say? For everyone that asketh, receiveth. The next part of that verse said, he that seeketh, findeth. And him that knocketh shall be opened. Can I ask God for something right now and expect to have it by the time I walk out that door? Maybe. Maybe not. (laughs) It's a possibility. I could uh, ask for God to give me a good glass of sweet tea right now. That sounds really good to me. I'm a little thirsty. (laughs) But it's just not going to manifest itself on here. Um, so I may just have to wait and uh, see if I have the opportunity because I'm hoping Jessica says that I don't have to hurry home that she wants me to swing by uh, Sonic to get her Route 44 water That'll give me some time to get me a, a sweet tea to go with that on the way home um, but anyway so a lot of times when we ask God for something there's a period of time between when we ask for it And when we may actually receive it. And that's where the seeking comes in. When you ask God for something, do you look for it like you actually expect Him to answer however you're asking? There's a a time of seeking and knocking to that. So I want to hang on to those and save those for next Wednesday night. We're going to talk about that a little bit. The, uh, the other two pieces of that verse, the, the, the seeking and the knocking that comes with the asking. Because they all tie in together uh, very well with those parts. Um, so again, seeking God's answer means that we're looking for possible ways through which God may answer our prayer. I'll just uh, leave you with that. And wanted to challenge you uh, in the the next week, uh, whenever you go to prayer, uh, whenever you go to God in prayer, especially if you have some kind of need. Uh, And the need may not even be for yourself. It could be for someone else. Some circumstances that somebody else is going through. Um, Whatever they're going through in their life or, you know, they're not saved and they need Jesus. and, And you ask God on their behalf. Whatever it is that you go to God before. Uh, one, obviously, make sure that we're uh, going to God through the name of Jesus. Because Jesus can take that prayer and work.
work it in a way that it needs to be uh, so it's for our best benefit and for God's best glory. Um, and we'll look at that uh, next week. Um, keep that a priority. Whenever you pray or whenever you ask God for anything, try to ask it in a manner that would bring God glory. Um, ask it in Jesus' name. And then next week, we will uh, go into the, the seeking and knocking, what happens after we ask that prayer. And see how all of this ties in together to help make our prayers uh, more um, effective. Um, whatever we go through. Because like I said, prayer is a powerful thing. Prayer does change things. I believe all of us that are here believe in that power of prayer and believe in prayer believe in the importance of prayer. So, uh, like I said, we'll, we'll leave it with this tonight, and we'll pick up on the other two parts of this uh, uh, next Wednesday. Anybody else got anything that they want to add before we close tonight? All right. Well, as I always say, I can't do it on my own. I always need all the help that I can get, and God wants to give us all the help that we need. But what do we got to do to get it? Right. Got to ask. <laughs> so uh, let's go to the Lord and uh, just ask him to, to help us with this. <clears throat> Great Heavenly Father, Lord, it is by the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, that we come before you.